Hi everybody, welcome to Sprague Wood Turning. My name is Jim. So this week uh, I've got another commission. Um, they wanted a maple burl with red and purple resin and I figured that this is what we would use. Now, this as it sits is not exactly the safest thing to turn. Pretty deep cracks in it. Uh, so that makes it a good candidate for uh, casting some resin. So purple and red uh, tinted resin and um, it does have anchor seal on it. So what I want to do is mount it between centers, clean up this foot area, grab it with the chuck and then just slowly turn it with uh, and I'll, I'll sand off the outside of this anchor seal with uh, 60 grit sandpaper and we'll cast it. So anyway that's this week's video. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Anytime I get a thumbs up on my video certainly helps with the analytics. Sharing my videos on your social media platforms is 100% awesome as well. And of course, leave a comment because every 5,000 subscribers, I give away a bowl. And we pick from the comments. All right, so let's get this mounted between centers, carefully true up this tenon, and get this air seal stripped off and get it ready for casting. Welcome to this week's video. Hopefully you're uh, having a great Friday. So, you know, a lot of people get injured every year wood turning, and it's probably because they're turning um, sketchy wood, or they don't notice the fact that there's a big crack through the pieces that they're turning, and then it flies apart and it hits them. You know, I'm no different. I've had, I've had pieces of wood fly apart. Um, luckily, I've never been seriously injured by it. Uh, whenever I am turning this kind of stuff, I typically don't stand in the throw of the lathe in case it does decide to come apart. <laughs> so yeah, I just want to strip this anchor seal off. I don't know if it's going to be an issue for casting, but I just want to make sure that it isn't. And then removing all the bark with a screwdriver. And then uh, you'll see me using um, a brass brush in my drill. Uh, and it does a real good job cleaning that bark up. All right, so here's the bucket that I want to use. Piece is all nice and cleaned up. That brass brush on the drill really does a good job of that. But we have an issue. I can get this in here. And I, I still have to wrap this in plastic. Like I do, like I've done in previous videos. But when I, jam, when I jam this in here, Makes this oval, and then it won't fit inside the pressure pocket. <laughs> so, now that I've got all the bark off of this, it's actually, I think, relatively safe to turn. So I'm going to put it back on the chuck, and I'm just going to true up the outside a bit so that it, when it goes down inside the bucket here, it doesn't all get distorted. There, I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, I just tried it in my pressure pot and it won't fit. Ideally, this would be another inch taller, um, but this is still gonna give us a very large bowl. All right, so let's put this on the lathe and trim it up and hopefully it doesn't fly apart. So now that this is back on the lathe, I'm standing, you know, back from that. You you know, there sometimes you're going to have to, and you'll see later on in this clip that I actually probably do walk in front of this when I'm trying to sweep the gouge down to the base of the, of the bowl. But, you know, just try to limit how much time that you're actually got your entire body in front of it. Um, you know, sometimes my arms just aren't long enough. That's all there is to it. Anyway. Uh, if you follow these safety practices, if it does come apart, you should be all right. Back again with the six mil poly. Um, you've probably seen me do this before if you've if you're a subscriber and been here. Uh, and this is just a really effective way to kind of wrap the outside of the bowl and um, limit how much resin you actually use. This time I'm using old rice. That way if I do get a leak, I can just simply turn it away and um, I don't have to worry about, you know, the marbles because I used to use marbles. Deep cast from Designer Epoxy. Mixing the epoxy is crucial. Uh, you know, the right proportions 
the mixing of it as well. Uh, this year, when you put A and B together, it turns cloudy. And then when it turns clear again, that's usually a good indication that it's mixed. But, you know, you're supposed to mix epoxy for two minutes straight and then scrape the sidewalls of the container with the tongue depressor. And as long as you um, follow these practices, you shouldn't have any issues. Glitter purple. This is the first time using the glitter purple and pearl red, which is uh, a fan favorite, including a favorite of mine. All right, so I'm gonna let these sit for an hour before we pour these and hopefully they stay separated when they go into the pressure pot. That's a really interesting purple. It looks almost kind of bluish. Maybe it needs some more. I'm gonna mix it stronger. I actually think by adding more powder, it made it more bluer. <laughs> All right, see you in an hour. All right, so this has been an hour and 15 minutes. So you know what, I'm gonna pour this. I don't wanna push my luck. No idea if we got enough or not. Just going to mix up some more. I'm going to put this in the pressure pot and then finish the pour in there. Hopefully these stay kind of separated. Hope it That's it. Can't give it any more than that. See you in 36 hours. Well, all right, let's see what we got. Hopefully the colors haven't blended. A little bit of a leak. Not too bad though. Sorry to those who tune in each week to watch me struggle get uh, my castings out of the pressure pot. Not much of that this week, but there's always next week. Well, it certainly looks like all of our voids are filled in, so that's good. Uh, I'm not real happy about all this wasted resin. I probably should have put uh, a, a cable tie around the base of this and it would have made it tighter to the bottom of the bowl. Uh, you know, regardless, it's, it's a successful casting and I guess that's really what we should be thankful for. But I just don't like wasting all this resin. All right, let's um, get this foot cleaned off so we can get a waste block on it. All right, so this is going to be the first time ever using the Hercules. And as you can see, what I've done is I've taken some emery cloth and uh, it's just a really, really super, super fine sandpaper. And I've just kind of taken any of the uh, little sticky kind of bluing off. And it slides quite well on the tool rest now. So hopefully we're not going to have um, any more issues with it kind of sticking on the, uh, the tool rest. Like some of the other tools did. I didn't do that to, these, to the other tools, but uh, I can already tell that this is going to be better. Anyway, let's see how this is going to do on this resin. I should also mention that there are little 45 degree areas uh, for the shaft of the tool to ride on the tool rest. To take any guesswork out of it. 250, 250. 
So you'll see that, you know, I'm taking my time with this tool because, you know, it's new to me and I don't know how it's going to behave. Uh, and you'll see me use it uh, in a straight up position or tilt it on its side. Um, you know, in, in the end, really you can almost treat it like a gouge. But the, head, the, the big, big bonus over this compared to a gouge is, of course, you don't have to sharpen it every couple of passes because that's about what it is i find when you're turning these these um these resin projects that you know when you're if you're trying to use a gouge you're constantly going to the grinder to put an edge on it and you don't have to do that with these carbide tools again push pull push cuts pull cuts straight up and down uh once things once I get the bulk of that resin down to where you're turning more resin than air in resin, um, it really works a lot better. It's not as choppy. Just cleaning up the foot area with my 3 16 inch parting tool from Crown. I do find when you're uh, using the Hercules uh, and you're doing push cuts with it, that it will uh, tend to really want to kick back on you so just keep a firm grip of it and you know let it know who's in charge and you won't have any issues with it That was just a real-time shot to give you an idea of, of what it's like in real time. When it's in this configuration here, there's really not a lot of uh, kickback, and there certainly isn't uh, in this configuration as well. That's more a push cut, and I can feel it start. See how I overhand it? I can feel it starting to want to kick back on me. I did find that if you go from the top of the bowl to the base, um, when it's tilted on a 45 degree angle, that it tends to give you a better cut. Um, you know, again, I'm still kind of figuring things out at this stage and just working back and forth and up and, you know, straight up and on its side. And there you can see how it, see how the surface there looks to be a little cleaner. So just, you know, I've still got some leftover resin, so, you know, I'm still playing with it. <laughs> There's another push cut. This definitely wants to kick back on you. But it actually gives you a very clean cut. Now, this was the only area that I decided to go with the gouge. I know how the gouge is going to behave here. And I've only got this pinch between centers, uh, basically the very inside bottom of the bowl and on the tailstock. So, you know, there's still a fair bit of movement at the rim. And I was really worried about uh, getting a catch with the Hercules and then having it blow up on me. So once once I'm familiar with more familiar with the tool, I'll be more confident to use it uh, in, in instances like this. Now, doing the inside was actually easier than doing the outside. Uh, you know, as you can see, I'm just going in and pulling back a couple inches in just to knock down uh, the heavy resin that's there. And yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's great. I mean, the fact that you don't have to go to the sharpener every two minutes um, makes tools like this their weight, worth their weight in gold. I did find that I did try a push cut in there and at that point I wasn't so sure that I should be doing that. And again, you know, on its side, straight up in the air, always checking wall thickness. 
but mostly pole cuts from the uh, the base out towards the rim seem to be quite effective. Just using my Mega Jaws here to hold on to the piece, and of course I'm using hot melt glue on a waste block like I always do, my preferred method of doing stuff. And so we had some of the plastic come into the casting area, so I'm just making some little dams so that I can pour more resin. All right, so I got two pigments mixed up here. This is the Pro Series. I've shown this before I use this is basically what I do with my leftover resin I just build these castings to do something in the future with There's that kickback from the push cut again, but I mean, it is just eating this resin up. Really, I'm really, at this point, I'm really starting to like this tool. Now, I will say this, that, you know, when it comes to wood turning, you need to learn how to use the bowl gouge. This, these tools are absolutely fantastic for resin wood combos, and I will use it 100% for that and future wood projects as well, all wood projects. But you know, the bowl gouge, you need to master that. These tools are 100% are an aid, but you really should know how to use a bowl gouge if you're gonna be making bowls. With all that said, um, a grind like the swept back grind that I, that you know, the David Ellsworth gouge comes with, when that is on its side, that is going to give you, because it has a really long edge on it, is going to give you probably a more flatter surface uh, where you're going to have less lumps and bumps in it. Lumps and bumps aren't really a huge problem. It's the tear out that's the issue. So, you know, keep that in mind that, you know, just a few seconds with the sandpaper and that little lump and little bump is gone. But I do find that a freshly sharpened gouge on its side if you use that as your very last cut it may give you the best surface but getting there you need a tool like this or you know you're going to be at the sharpener all the time Back again with three and a half inch dimple discs from sandpaper.ca. And I was just going to go to 220. I knew that there was just a couple little areas that needed to be filled in with the CA glue. So that's why I only went to uh, 220. So if you turn burls or if you haven't turned burls, the grain is running in all different directions. So it's very, very hard to get a clean cut on it. And usually I have more tear out than this when I do with a gouge. So that's something to think about as well. All right, so we got a few little cracks and just tiny little areas. Uh, very impressed. All these cracks have been filled in and there was a ton of them. So I just happened to have some tinted resin or sorry, some tinted CA glue 
This is the thin stuff from Starbond from a previous project. So you know, I'm just going to throw it in here, fill in any of these little cracks, which, like I said, there's not very many of, and then uh, use the accelerator to set it. And then we can get right back to our project. There you go, it's all needed. Back to sanding. So I carried on sanding to 800 and then um, the last step before finish is the triple E compound. I find that really does a good job taking out all those little scratches that might be left in the resin. As I like to say, this is the best part. First coat of Salad bowl finish by General Finishes. I haven't been doing much production work. I've mostly been shooting videos here. So this can of uh, salad bowl finish by General Finishes is, is lasting quite quite some time. Um, so yeah, people are probably wondering where I'm getting it from. Well, it's still the same can. She is a beauty. I mean, look at that. That is absolutely awesome. And there's definitely a purple tinge to it. That's really cool where they're mixed together. But, you know, I'm, I'm surprised at how blue it looks. I thought it would be a lot more purpley than it is. Regardless, I mean, that is absolutely fantastic. Love it. Check that out. I love how that purple as combined with the red. Absolutely fantastic. Beautiful. See you tomorrow. Second coat of salad bowl finish. That just might do it. We'll have to see. So cool. See you tomorrow. So doing a shiny finish is not an easy finish to do. And I know that's why a lot of people stay away from them. Um, I want to put on a product that's going to last and protect the bowl. The other thing too is, you know, you can put a mineral oil and beeswax uh, finish on these bowls. And yeah, maybe they'll look fine, but there's no way that it's ever going to bring out the beauty like these shiny finishes, like, you know, wood bowl finish or, or, or salad bowl finish by journal finishes can. So I realize why a lot of people don't do them, but they certainly... Um, you need to do the wood justice and these finishes will do that. All right, so before we talk about the bowl, let's talk about the gouge. Now, this is the Hercules. As you can see, it's, it's quite a robust tool. Uh, it's kind of funny talking to Mike Hunter. He said that uh, a lot of the, the tools that they ship to Canada are handled and the ones in the US, uh, apparently Americans don't want them handled. I don't know, and I told him that I prefer a, a, a tool that's handled. And as you can see, I mean, it's a pretty robust tool. It's probably very similar to the Ellsworth gouge in length, uh, in mass. I don't have real big hands, so it's it's a bit beefy for me here, but um, not so bad right there. It's pretty good there. Uh, regardless, you know, I, I, haven't, I haven't turned the cutter on this tool yet. Um, it'd be interesting to see 
how many bowls I can get out of it before I need to turn the cutter. I actually used it again today on a different project and it, uh, it worked flawlessly. So anyway, in the description down below is Hunter Tools for your discount codes. And of course, there's information for Canadians that want to buy uh, this Hercules and other Hunter Tools as well. All right, so that's, that's the Hercules. Let's talk about our bowl. Check this beauty out. So it ended up being 10 and a half by four and a half. I had to turn the lights off because it's so shiny. Absolutely beautiful. There's the very bottom. And of course we've got glitter purple and red pearl resin. Absolutely beautiful. Really like this area right here where the resin's all combined. Totally awesome. Three coats of salad bowl finish. Um, you know, this is a very, very beautiful bowl. And you know, it's one of them pieces of wood. If you look at the cracks on the bottom of this thing, putting this on the lathe and turning it is, is sketchy. And this is where resin is king over CA glue and that kind of stuff as far as keeping things together. Uh, I have no problem at all mounting this between centers and turning this normally just like I would with any other solid piece of wood after it's been cast in resin. The resin does a fabulous job of, um, of sealing up all those cracks and making it safe to turn. So let me know in the comments down below what you think about this week's project. Uh, this is actually the first time that I've been able to keep the two colored resins separate when I poured them in. And that's because I waited, uh, I think, about an hour and 15 minutes, hour and 20 minutes before I poured them into the, um, into the mold. And absolutely fantastic, and I'm totally happy about it. Um, I asked Gabriel at Designer Epoxy, you know, it seemed to turn more blue than purple. There's definitely a purple tinge to it. And, you know, he, he doesn't know. He doesn't really know what's going on there. Uh, I think maybe if I hadn't mixed the pigment so strong that it probably would have been more purpley. But I really wanted that pearl. That pearl is totally awesome. And um, I think the new owners are going to be absolutely ecstatic. All right, so anyway, let me know in the comments down below what you think about this week's project. And, of course, that's where we're going to get the next uh, winner for... 30,000 subscriber giveaway bowl will be from the comments. Um, don't forget about designer epoxy, sandpaper.ca, and Starbon adhesives. All your discount codes are in the description down below, so make sure you check them out. All right, well, I'm not 100% sure what it's going to be next week, but hopefully it's something really cool, so make sure you come on back. Anytime I can get a thumbs up on my videos will help with the analytics. Sharing my videos on your social media platforms is 100% awesome. Thank you so much for doing that and getting the word out. And I guess that's it. Till the next video, take care, stay safe. Don't forget that bell, and we'll see you next week.